I'm sorry. I, I, you totally. I don't think advice. you understand me at all. <laughs> Is it too late to let Dave go first? <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Could we have uh, Dave, Dave Pinkley in here first, please? <laughs> Mayor's in charge. He's got a gun, so. <laughs> the guy with the gun is in charge? Oh. All right. Um, the issue that, that must. Each of the departments, other than the Parks Department, that submitted a budget, submitted a budget that could function within the funds that are generated by the respective specialized taxes or the user fees, such as water and sewer. Uh, the, uh, the departments that are funded out of general revenue uh, in parks. Um, we have projected uh, expenses in excess $260,000 more than the revenues we expect. So uh, at some point in this process, we have to figure out how to spend $260,000 less, well, or some amount less than uh, what, was, what was requested. Um, or enhance the revenue by using either our cash carryover, which is currently projected at three hundred thousand, yes. or or, uh, <laughs> or or use some of our investments and in certificates of deposit. So those are kind of the choices that are before us, uh, and and I think Tom has just expressed a desire to uh, rather than just arbitrarily say take this, take that, that there be some discussion about the principles involved in the decisions that we make for each for, for the budget I don't necessarily think the budget hearings with the department heads will get us to the final conclusion I think the purpose of the, this is to find out kind of what the department director's priorities are so that as we enter into a discussion about the overall budget we can keep those priorities in mind uh, it, in, in making the hard decisions that, that, that you have to make. Uh, so I don't think we're going to walk away from tonight saying, okay, the police budget is X number of dollars. Uh, it's going to be at what level can the police function to achieve the goals that you have for your citizens? Uh, and then that'll kind of guide us as to how we balance all of this out when we consider the needs of all of the departments, including the police department. Didn't you guys have a, a budget meeting uh, that I missed? I was gone. It was just a no. presentation of the. Oh, well, that's all it was. The document. So, so everybody just now looked at everything. There was no discussion of any details. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is do we have money set aside for roads, sidewalks, and other uh, infrastructures like that? We. This budget, this budget. This budget does not include any any. Capital improvements any, for roads any, or sidewalks. So we don't have any money at all to not fix in the budget any roads. Not in the budget that is before you. I mean, if, if whatever you choose to do along those lines, you're going to have to figure out from where the money will come. Again, whether it comes from reductions we can make in other general fund supported projects or the use of the cash that we're carrying over or the use of your investments and certificates of deposit. Which are shown on the cover all sheet. All you can do is increase the revenue or cut the expenses. Mm -hmm. the so, the revenue. so you know that's what we got to figure out. If we're still going to do something with the roads, still fix the roads in this community, it's we got to get some money somewhere. And uh, when you come up with a budget for the police department, we just you just use the same number from last year. Uh, no, I use. The, the, the budget figures that the department head, the police chief, submitted to me, which... What page is that? 13, 13, 14. Um, you also make note that there's, there's nothing, if you notice, there's nothing in here for salaries, and there's nothing in here for health insurance? There's 10%. There is 10%? Yeah. For health insurance? Okay. We were notified yesterday or today? Yesterday, I guess. 
that we can look forward to a 22 percent. Was it 22 or 23? Uh, a 22 or 3 percent increase in our health insurance premiums, uh, which maybe a, a, we don't know that. We won't know until they actually did it. But kind of based on our, our current census and claims experience, uh, they're anticipating some rather high payouts from the health insurance in the, in the coming years. Right. So, so the budget is 10 in here, so that leaves us 13. 13. And Pam's, or Pam, Pam's these guys are sitting in the analysis. Of, it's okay. okay. So it's, we've, we're, we're short there already, the way it looks. Unless we go with a different plan, higher deductible, do whatever to, 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 to do something to make up that difference in the increase in the insurance. So you got 10 in here, right? Yes. Eric's looks a little different because of the change in personnel and plans and stuff, but yes. So, so we're working off of, right now, we're working off 858, 819 is what the police department Right, which budgeted. is which is less than he had budgeted in the prior budget year. Yeah. Right. He's down. Well, uh, I'm I'm going to restate this. Uh, without a goal <coughs> of. The, the philosophy on how we're going to approach the budget. And I think we have the cart here before the horse. That uh, if we have a stated goal of, I know Ted, you're interested in in uh, finding money for streets. John, I know you're interested. In, I know I'm interested, in, and I don't really know what everybody else is interested in. So if we were going to try to find some uh, in percentage of the overall budget, whether it was five percent, ten percent, or bigger or smaller um, that would give me guidance in uh, speaking and asking the department heads you know is is what our number a realistic number so if we said we're going to reduce every every budget the whole budget by 25 percent that's probably a very unrealistic number but maybe seven and a half percent five percent it might we might consider that a more a realistic number so I mean, I, I know that we can ask Eric a lot of questions. She's been a lot of questions, and, and I'm sure you have excellent answers to respond to, because I know you put an awful lot of effort into your budget. So what, what are we trying to do? What's our goal here tonight, right now? Uh, I think, number one, we, we don't want to, I don't think anybody wants to touch any of the CDs. We take the 260 out of the 400 that we got left. It would be like 140,000 that you would have left to carry forward into 15. That, that doesn't sound too good to me no. either. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously we have to, and then you're looking at probably a higher health insurance, again, unless we look at doing something different there to offset that. Maybe we just leave that at 10 and say somehow one way or the other we're going to make up the other 10 or 15 percent either in raising the deductible a different plan all right let's just leave that say say we're going to make that up within it somehow okay so we need to 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 and then you got the ninety thousand dollars that's going to come out of tiff that's not going to be there available next year so i, I think that's something we'll put it off till next year okay or consider it for this year consider it this year too I, I, I don't know or, or at least look at that budget it'll be there and it'll be there to spend if you want it to be but um, I think it's something we consider for it needs some consideration so if you <coughs> I don't know that we can't not take some of the money from the 400,000 it'd be nice to be able to to not touch that but that would mean we'd have to cut the budget by two hundred sixty thousand dollars. 
just to break even and not do anything with streets. That doesn't make much sense, then, does it? Huh? That doesn't make much sense. No, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, uh... Well, it, it's... I had to tell you what I thought you should do is to interview each department head and find out what your options are relative to each department. Sounds good. Kind of a this level, this level, and this level. Excellent. So that that if you do have to make cuts, you're making cuts that are consistent with the priorities of the chief or the department director. So you get a sense of what their options are. And after we've done that, and we kind of have that knowledge from each of them we can sit down and address this kind of bottom line question. But you don't want to just arbitrarily, it's like you, as you say, talk about the buttons. You, 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 want to, you want to do what is consistent with your professional staff's opinion about how they can best operate their department. Because ultimately, you're going to hold the chief responsible for the performance of his department whatever budget he gets. So. Good enough answer for me. Okay. <laughs> can I start? You can start. Eric, I know that you give a lot of thought and you're very detailed about your budget. As you can tell, there's, there's somewhat of a consensus for trying to find some money. Uh, our, our revenue's not growing, so we have to try to find them in the place. We'll have a limit. Right. We're not going to find as much money for streets as we want. Uh, and no department head is probably going to get as much money as they want. But in, while you were looking at your budget, um, I know that you submitted your real numbers. But thinking, uh, like somebody sitting at this side of the table uh, and asking you, what can you do? Without, without jeopardizing public safety, uh, do you have any thoughts or ideas that anything created that we might not be seeing, or you, know, you want to make like an opening statement? Okay, sure. Uh, in, in my opinion, my job is to ensure that the citizens are safe, that the city is safe. Uh, do that in a manner that, that makes us look good and makes you guys look good as a board. Uh, I think the way that we do that is treating our employees well. You know, I think that my job is as much defending my officers that work for me as it is disciplining them when they do wrong. Um, when I when I started here, uh, the department had a pretty bad reputation, bad heavy officers, people that weren't treating the citizens well. Um, and I have, I have made that my goal ever since I've been here is to improve the reputation that the department has in the city. And I think that I've been pretty effective in that too. Um, again, I think that that happens in a, in a couple of ways. Um, I think that we don't have a whole lot to offer, offer new, new hires here. Uh, we, we, we don't pay the salary that the Sheriff's Department pays. Um, we don't have nearly the facility that the Sheriff's Department has. And it's hard to attract applicants past Bosler Drive to here. Uh, I think what we do have to offer is is good management, good leadership, a good reputation is, is starting to to help. Uh, we have good equipment. Uh, you know, we, we try. I've worked for departments before that that you have to buy pretty well everything but your car. And not too many years before I came here, they were even providing their own car in this county. Um, so, my typical interview process consists of, yes, this is an old building, yes, we're out of space, we do the best with what we can, but our benefit to you is to make sure that you have the equipment that you need to do your job and to, to like your job. Um, I know that every year uh, cars are a hot button issue, um, you know, and, and I'm glad to see former Alderman Steiger here. Uh, because he, he was instrumental in, in helping along with the mayor getting a vehicle replacement program so we're not buying three cars a year, five cars a year, six, six cars a year. Uh, when I first started, I started in 2008 as chief. Uh, in 2007, they bought six cars on a lease. 
well then obviously your six cars are going to age the same rate and will need to be replaced at that rate. So we decided early on to try to, to try to hedge that a little bit and start replacing fewer cars more often. So we looked at two cars a year. Um, so far, it, I think that it's been a beneficial program. Like I said, we don't have the salary that, that I would like to pay these guys. Um, but I think that, that for a very small investment, we can get them something that they can be proud of. It's their own car. They're going to have more of an interest in it. They're going to take care of it. They're going to keep it clean. They're going to treat it well. Um, you know, we, we've really worked on our maintenance issues, trying to trying to make sure we're on top of that, make sure the cars are, are in good working order. Um, the problem that we have, I mean, we could certainly run cars to 200,000 miles. Um, but it, it kind of goes back to one, what is the philosophy that this board has for what you want from your department? Uh, we could drive 1989 Caprices, but I don't think that you're going to have a proactive or professional department, and that's what we strive for, both in, in uniforms and in the equipment that we carry, the equipment that we drive. We strive to, to, to exude a professional uh, image to the citizens, both the people that live here and the people that are visiting here. We want it to be a, a positive image for, for the tourists and, and for the people that live here. Um, so, uh, we've replaced two cars a year. As you guys know, last year we, we moved some money around and was, we were able to purchase one vehicle that would have been on this year's budget uh, outright. We didn't have to lease it uh, with, the, with the hope and, and understanding that we would replace the second car that would have been uh, put in this, this year's budget for replacement. Uh, this budget does reflect uh, the, the purchase of an additional vehicle, replacement of, of a vehicle. Um, um, you know, I, I, I went through every line item. We get, just like here, you get the 2010 actual, the 2011 actual, the 2012 actual. I wanted to go through and compare that to where I was budgeted, because this doesn't reflect what was budgeted that year. And look at what we actually spent line item by line item by line item, and, and tried to cut all the fat that I could. I mean, the, 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 the totals that are here really fairly accurately represent the, the totals of, of what we've spent in years past, uh, both from, from office supplies to um, fuel, which of course is something that we just kind of gamble with every year because you don't know what the fuel prices are going to do. Uh, but we really, we really try to manage our budget well, and I've, I've consistently come in under budget every year, which again was the philosophy that, that was expressed to me when I was hired. Yes, we'll give you this money. Yes, you should buy what you need, um, but don't don't spend frivolous, frivolously. So that's what we have, I've, I've tried to do every year since I've been here is, is return the money, as much money as I can to the city. Um, and, and my fear that sometime that's going to come back and bite me because I don't want the city to adopt a policy. Well, we budgeted you, $20,000 more than you spent, so if you're not going to spend it, we're not going to budget it. Um, and I think that that's been pretty well explained over the years, that yes, we were budgeted, and yes, there was things that, that we could buy. Some of it is, is rainy day money, you know, because you don't know what's going to break or happen during the year. But I, I, I feel, especially my, my associations with the other department heads, is that everybody's pretty well on the same page there. I don't think you're ever going to see us go out the last month and, and spend $60,000 because that's what we're budgeted with the understanding that you guys understand that's why we're trying to return it. We want, we want to spend it wisely and we want to spend it well. Um, the only things, as you see in here, there's a pretty substantial decrease in salaries. Uh, that's with the anticipation of, of losing uh, Sergeant Pollock from our staff. Uh, I didn't want to, to get into it too much. Is this on, on camera? Is this, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to go into the specifics on his, on his health situation, but um, he has uh, expended all of his paid time off that he has from us. Uh, we've donated the time that we can donate by ordinance to help him. Uh, so he's on family medical leave uh, now, uh, pending the approval of all of his, of his other situations that he's, that he's applied for. Um, so there's, there's some decrease in the, in the salary line item for that. Um, the increases that I've put in, uh, in addition to what we have, the, the, the equipment that we have, not the dollar-wise, 
Uh, I did budget for an additional car, which would replace a 2007 Impala with about 90,000 miles right now. By the time the replacement comes in, it should be uh, near 100,000, if not over. Um, additionally, I put in a request for uh, to replace all of our in-car camera systems. Uh, this would be a recurring cost. It would be a, a, a lease similar to our cars. Uh, the benefit to that for us, uh, the cameras themselves come with a two-year warranty, uh, but with the lease, they will, they will warranty those the life of the lease. So it will get us an additional three years warranty. And, it, I, you know, we wouldn't have the, the uh, $50,000. Stop there for a minute. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to get to the camera issue, but first of all, I want to say that I think this board, at least to my limited experience, understands that you don't penalize departments that have been judicious in this expenditure of their money by reducing their budget the next year. We, we projected a $200,000 carryover in our budget. Because our department heads, I think partially because they sense that if they, if they don't spend a dollar, they aren't going to be penalized for having saved it. We were able to carry over four hundred thousand dollars, so uh, I think it's an important philosophy that we, we should we keep in mind. And, yeah. and I think it is one of multiple philosophies on budgeting. Yeah. The 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 now when you and I discussed the cameras, you told me the, that the problems of our existing cameras. I wish you'd express that a, a little more. Yeah. and then talk about the possibility of alternative funding for those things. Okay. Um, I would also uh, encourage anybody that has any questions, I'll, you know, I'm going to talk about MDTs and SROs and, and a lot of acronyms that, that I use daily that, that if you guys don't understand, please ask. I would be happy to, to give you a tour of a patrol car, what it actually consists of, the equipment that's in there, why we need replacement, or well, just why just use the full name for the time. Right, I will. Won't have well, and right now I'm just talking about in-car cameras. That's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. But again, I would like to show you the setup that we have if you guys ever wanted to take that opportunity. Right now we, we have utilized a company that's called Digital Ally for our in-car camera systems. Uh, it, it has served us fairly well um, in recent, within the last year, they have changed their uh, uh, maintenance and, and service uh, availability. They, they've changed their, their criteria for that and, and require a minimum uh, upfront price of I think it's like $350 just to send something in. Um, so we have a couple that have failed us and uh, so so I am I'm looking at the possibility of, of more failing us um, in the future and trying to trying to um, kind of streamline that a little bit and, and get a, a consistent camera that's, that's user friendly for all the officers no matter what car they jump in we try to set them up as closely uniformed as, as we can. Um, so this would this would purchase a, a, a new uh, in-car camera system for the eight patrol cars that we have including the two supervisors cars. Uh, that would not include my car, the assistant chief's car. Uh, typically, like today, if I'm working on covering calls, I end up driving one of the, the regular patrol cars so that I have all the bells and whistles that I need. Uh, probably doesn't sound well. I mean, I'm not, I'm not supplying bells and whistles, but the equipment, the, the mobile data terminals have docking stations and things like that. It just really helps with the, uh, with the performance. So, with that being said, I, I am looking at replacing a Digital Ally brand in-car camera that we have eight of now or six of now. And, uh, and go to a, a, a car camera that's called uh, something else that has left my brain right now. Um, what is that? A better warranty. A, a better warranty, yes. Uh, it will still be a user-friendly camera, and that's WatchGuard, WatchGuard brand. Uh, now, understanding, you know, we went into this budget realizing that, that there's not a whole lot of money extra. And, and I would like to, again, express that, that we took that into consideration when preparing our budgets. Um, in talking to the, the state prosecuting attorney, Carl Kensky, they have a law enforcement restitution fund that, that may be able to aid in, in the purchase of, of the in-car camera systems because it is an evidentiary item uh, that we use 
both to capture arrests. Uh, we use it administratively to, to handle any complaints that we get. Uh, typically, from my experience, the, the in-car cameras have been way more valuable than the, the dollar amount that we put on them because the first time somebody comes in and says, hey, your guy slapped me around, your guy was rude to me, whatever the complaint is, my first my first instinct, even without watching the video, is to play the video for them. We see it at the same time together, and every time I've done that, they've been like, oh, yeah, I didn't remember that I said that. You know, and, and the complaint is, is unsubstantiated, and it, and it helps the city, and it's, I think it's a great benefit to the city. I think it's a great benefit to me as an administrator, and, and Carl Kinski thinks that it's a great benefit to, to his criminal prosecution. Uh, he doesn't have the funds to, to purchase them outright or, or supply the whole thing, but he, he has indicated, and I don't know what to, to what extent, that he would be willing to, to approach his board. It is another board situation that, that would require approval, but he would make application for those uh, to, to help and assist with the, with the expenditure of that. So uh, that, is a, that is an option, uh, and certainly one that we would have to sit down and discuss the logistics of. Does the sheriff's department and surrounding counties, other towns, do they have them? The in-car cameras? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So in fact, two of the ones that we have now, we got from the sheriff's department. We have two older watch guards right now, um, and they, they went to all Digital Ally, which is the company that we're starting to get away from because of the, the maintenance costs. Um, but it is, a, a, I would say, almost an exclusively uh, universal uh, program right now because because of the liability because of you know both pursuits or, or car crashes or uh, you know just administrative issues that we would that we would have some potential of, of a disciplinary action but also like I said the, 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 the criminal prosecution it's getting harder and harder to even make a case without without that being documented there's there's new case law that came down within the last couple of years that requires uh, interviews and whatnot to be custodial interviews to be videotaped and this system would actually allow that real time you know if you if you get a spontaneous utterance in a car or something from an accident that happened it, it would just be a good a good program you, where do you have that in your budget that is in small equipment small equipment yes twelve thousand okay eric how many officers in your proposed 2014 budget uh, in that in that figure, how many officers does that include? So that, that's retaining the 10 officers and one uh, would be considered part-time police clerk now. With her doing the double duty uh, with uh, court clerk, we split the salary between us and the judicial line item. So it's it's half of our police clerk salary. So the, our overall expenses don't go down, but that particular line item in his budget was reduced by the split. What was your first, uh, this is kind of, and I apologize, I should know the answer to this, but what was the first year budget you worked on and you submitted? When I came in in 2008, I came in in October, so it was a completed budget, okay. so I operated under that budget, so 2009. Was Answer my question, thank you. Okay. <laughs> How many vehicles, uh, what sign is that? Uh, it's the one above, uh, small equipment, 8045. And that is, uh, we have 10 vehicles, so one, one per full-time officer. And I have a breakdown of those with the mileage, if that would help them, if you'd like to see that. So, I'm sorry. Uh, 8045, motor vehicle equipment. I was, how, many, how many vehicles? That That's just purchasing one, and I'm, I'm asking for an increase for one. I'm looking for our overall vehicle cost. That that would be the overall vehicle cost uh, for, for purchase. Uh, that includes the leases I mean, that we're already for the total ten cars that we. Right. We have we have two cars on lease from ten, two on two on lease from eleven, and uh, it's two on lease from 2012. In terms of so it overall step cost, you're looking for yeah. You got nine thousand for maintenance. Yeah. Where's, I'm looking for where's vehicle costs. Lease costs yeah. per each year per everything. I, I would have to provide that. Uh, I can get a copy of that. I mean, where's it at in the budget? 
It, it's a it's an overall. It's that forty nine thousand that's, that's okay. listed there. All right, forty nine five hundred four. Well, okay, so that's so what is the one vehicle that covers? I'm sorry. What what is, what do you anticipate one vehicle would cost? Seven thousand lease per year. So you, that forty nine, seven of it is the new vehicle. Yes. That's the question I was getting at. Okay. So what is the and the vehicle that's it's replacing is also under lease? No, it's paid it's okay. paid for now. It was leased in two thousand seven, but that lease has has come. To so that. should we not purchase a vehicle this year? We're not talking about saving forty nine thousand. We're talking about saving seven thousand. That's where I was trying to drive okay. back to. Okay. It's a small number. Mm -hmm. What I was getting. At. But then is that a hard number? The seven thousand. It ain't like last this last time we bought a vehicle and it was another. 12,000 or whatever to well, the, upgrade it or put all the stuff on it. The pro th that is including the upfitting cost. The problem that we had last year was we had, we had accepted the proposal from Ford for the trade-in value of the cars, but then when we, when we backed out of that and had to sell them separately, then we had to do the budget amendment to include that because it was included in the original proposal the, the, the new cars less the trade-in value, which would have gone into the equipment. So every, every year that I've made a, a proposal for vehicles, it's included the car and the upfitting equipment. Um, and this, this year would be no exception. And we certainly reuse as much of the equipment as we can from the old cars, but there's some things that just have a life, the, the, the silent box, the, uh, you know, the lights, to some extent, you know, we use as much as we can, uh, but there is some some upfit cost. You had I got a series of questions for you. It starts at the top. If you had an unlimited budget, how many police officers would you recommend for the city? I don't know that I could give you a hard answer on that. I mean, right now, I mean, can you conceive our needing more than ten? I, I could see needing a full-time detective. Um, we are increasing to, to include a, a school resource officer, which will be no expense to us because it's going to be a school, school employee, but at our uh, direction. Um, so I, I, I don't see needing to fund that as long as the school will do that. Uh, but I, I would certainly uh, see a full-time detective being very beneficial to the city. Right now, that's, those are duties that myself and the, the assistant chief split and usually work in cooperation. So so your answer then is one more? Yes. And when, when I first started in 2008, we were budgeted for 11 officers plus our police clerk and sacrificed one officer with the understanding that the additional officers would get a raise, which actually didn't happen. Um, but it was, it was budgeted for 11 when I first came here. My, my tag on to your question very briefly. How many officers do you try to have on duty at any given time? I, mean, I usually don't answer that. Yeah, in public, not on TV. But I can discuss that with you. It's, it's not the 10 officers that, that is typically uh, believed to be. Uh, but well, we don't want anybody to rob in Fort Knox to tell them there's only three officers. Right, on TV. right. Well, uh, but let's talk about kind of the, the, the dynamics of your staff and how. What, what hardships might be experienced should there be a reduction in force with scheduling problems and whatever else occurs to you? We, we typically will, we, we've adopted the philosophy two is one and one is none. So any felony situation, any domestic situation, uh, two officers, it's two officer response as long as there's, there's two assailants. If there's three assailants, you know, then we want, you know, three or four officer response. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, right now, obviously, we've got two positions that are being held, not being held, but we're still playing, paying a salary for, uh, but not able to, to fill the positions. Uh, during that time, I know I've increased uh, my weekly hours considerably, working, working, covering the road, you know, with applications and whatnot. So, uh, I, I would think that a, a reduction in staff would be extremely detrimental to at least the efforts that we are able to provide now and that you know as I discussed in the beginning you know some of our reputation when I first got here was was that of just a call-taking agency uh, people if they had their house burglarized got to where they knew 
if they called the police, it was going to be a report on file, and that was it, as far as it was going to go. There would be no investigation. There would be no no real satisfaction or conclusion to the case other than that it would be a report on paper somewhere. So a lot of my goals since I've gotten here and, and having uh, Jason Crump has been an, an invaluable asset to that. He's a great detective and, and a great administrator. Uh, but a lot of my philosophy and, and goal since I've been here is to, to reduce or, or really turn over that reputation to one that people actually want to call because they know that there's going to be a, a successful resolution to the case and, and I think that we have accomplished that but I've seen a huge reduction just since January since we've been short-staffed in the amount of time that we can dedicate to to investigating cases because we're covering the road and the other administrative roles that we that we currently have um, again it's, it's it's all boils down to, to the velocity that the board has and what what uh, the board wants us as its representation of the city but um, you know, as I've said in, in years past, you know, my job is to manage the budget that you guys uh, provide for me, and, and we'll continue to do that um, as, as just as best as we can. You know, on the other side of the coin, like Martin said, if you had an unlimited budget or you had an increased budget of what you would do, <clears throat> say each department was requested to take a 7.5% cut in their budget. Now, I'm pretty sure you said that you wouldn't get rid of a personnel uh, if you had to do something like that. That would be my last option. Right. What would be your first option? Well, How looking at that, that would that be to your ability to perform and manage your department? Again, there's 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 two sides of the coin on that. One is is ease of scheduling and ease of work on the administrators as far as uh, as far as consistency between the squads uh, we would certainly look at at other options uh, right now we work 12 hour shifts we may need to, to look at, at another type of shift to, to try to maximize the effectiveness from my experience 12 hour shifts is really the best way to do that with with the shortest number of people uh, but we would certainly look at, at other options there tens or eights or or whatever the case may be, um, it, it kind of goes hand in hand with the with the cars. You know, some of that is is just mathematics, and as far as the number of cars you replace a year to, to be consistent and 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 fair for everybody, um, I think that you know again, if you guys came back and, and I had a seven seven percent decrease, I would cut everything that I could cut prior to staff. Um, but if, if it came to that, again, I guess we just look at, at different scheduling and and uh, I would anticipate working a lot more myself. Well, actually, okay. right now you've got 10 officers and you're really <coughs> working with eight trying to fill up a slot, slot that you would normally Yeah, right now I'm at five. seven with two on vacation so, so uh, <laughs> and so your you know, weekend hours are it, 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 in summertime people go on vacation right yeah right but, but even so he's got you have a sickness, sickness you know you can't anticipate yeah, that yeah, you know, about that uh, no i mean i don't think could, anybody could, i'm sorry yeah, exactly you i don't think anybody at the table wants to jeopardize uh public safety Right. I mean, if somebody picks the phone up, they want the police to show up. And, and we understand and, that. And nobody is encouraging that. But at the same time, we're going to look really hard at every individual department's budget and say, well, listen, that's going back to that general philosophy of what do we want to do? Yeah. If we're okay with, with having a coasting year without trying to do any street improvements, we'll leave everything alone. Mm -hmm. But th this is going to be hard, I think some hard, challenging Discussions involved here. I, I understand. Your cars will last longer. We have better streets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if you have the shiniest street, no car to get there, then it's not going to be a whole lot. Well, you have to balance it out. <laughs> and then the trucks can go faster. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I don't think the town's grown in the last ten years. Okay. So. But I don't think that's the police department's fault. No, <laughs> but it's just. No. But the, everybody talks about years ago how. When they had six officers, one time they only had two officers. Well, 
Yeah, mm -hmm. we can't go back there. Oh, I know. I, I agree, but I'm well, just we, you know, I, yeah, so really I hear the bite the bullet. We're going to have to yeah. start. For 80 something. years, the town has been between 4,000 and 4,500 people. Mm -hmm. We've been down a little bit, and here are 4,400 people. And the response I usually get, and I'll let Eric speak for himself, is times change. Mm -hmm. uh, so why don't you talk about why it's different now? Well, I think one is just an overall respect for authority in general. I think if you'd have talked to police officers in the 70s, the way people treat and talk to us now, uh, you would be handled significantly differently. I don't think that, I mean, I'm not saying that, that officers in the 70s and 80s didn't have uh, disrespectful or, or aggressive people, but I think it is certainly, uh, it has certainly increased with, with internet and, and everybody having a cell phone and everybody watching everything that, that the officers do. They want to get in a confrontation, they want it to be videotaped, and they want to sue the city for everything they have. I think on the flip side of that, the second we send a one officer into a serious situation and they get hurt or killed in the line of duty, the amount of salary that we've paid is going to be nothing compared to the, the liability that we've put them in and also the, the loss of, I mean, nobody wants to deal with that. No city, no administrator, no fellow officer wants to deal with, with the loss of an officer, especially uh, at the expense of, of the appropriate backup. Um, I don't, I don't feel, I, I, I can't stress this enough, I don't think that, that we have an overage of officers. I don't think that we have an abundance of officers. Um, I don't think right now that we spend any more than we absolutely have to, for the most part. I mean, there are, there are certain luxuries I'm sure that we could, that we could do without. We could drop another phone line, we could, uh, we could drop half the cars and, and share a car, but I think that it gets back to the, the morale of our officers directly affects how they treat the citizens and how they do their job. And, you know, I, I have a hard enough time now attracting officers here over other departments, but, you know, what the, the small incentives that we try to give them to keep their morale up, I think is what, is what keeps officers here and, and, and enables us to have the reputation to attract new officers. Mm -hmm. um, again, it, it, you know, whatever budget you guys decide to, to give us, we'll operate under. Um, but I, I, I hope that that you realize or, or understand that that we don't go into this uh, wastefully. We don't go into this with a huge wish list and, and frivolous uh, requests. Uh, the staff that we have and the equipment that we have, I think that we can justify every every line item of. Um, so again, you guys are, are the boss and, and we'll certainly do with that whatever you provide us, but um, I think that we have a, a, a strong, a strong police force right now. I think it's the best that the county's probably ever had, as far as the relationship between us and the sheriff's department, and and the relationship that we have uh, to be able to work side by side, and, and the communication that's there. And I think that, that that is enabled by the staff that we have right now, and the number of officers that we have right now, that enables us to to be administrators and network, and also. Uh, encourage our officers to to be proactive and and continue to raise the bar well eric i i want to you know for myself and i know i'm speaking for the board appreciate the job that you do every year on a budget and you do you end up coming in under budget every year i think that you've been police chief and i appreciate that so i know you're not you know, just just uh wasting money or, or doing it. I know you, you keep track of it the best that you possibly can and, and do the best job that you can and I appreciate that. And the other thing is, um, you know, I've, this is I guess my 11th year and you know, certainly in the last three or four, uh, I, I don't hear about the police department to speak of every once in a while you do, but usually there's certainly another side to the story. But and the less I hear, the no, to me, no news is good news when it comes to that. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of agree with. And I think your relationship with the county is, it's it's definitely the best it's been as far as our police department since I've been mayor. So, all of those are, are good things, and I appreciate that. Uh, one question that I had, or you, and I think I even brought it up the other night, your seventy thousand on your dispatching fees. You're pretty confident that. 
I, that that's going to go down. I no, I, I think that, that that reflects where it has gone down. Um, I mean, from where you're you're 90, you know, you're at 78. We were at now. 104 in 2010. Uh, we were at 78 this year. Uh, we just went through all the percentages with the county commission as far as usage between us, the, the ambulance district, and the sheriff's department. We were, we were, uh, last year we were uh, assessed or, or invoiced for 27% of the call right. volume with bringing on the MDTs and, and handling a lot of our mule stuff our, ourselves. They had the mobile data terminals on our cars. Uh, we're down to 22% as of halfway through the year and uh, anticipate staying pretty close on track to that. So we've Good gotten on. an affirmation from the county commission, regardless of what they get billed from St. Francis County 911, our, our usage, our invoice will reflect the, our usage. It'll be an it will, okay. Maybe I, I guess I, I, I meant to go back and read that of, of what I thought they said, or at least what I thought the paper yeah. said was, and like Gary said, they were going to leave those percentages alone for this well, year. Well, and I think there, there's two issues here. There's, there's, because we don't contract with St. Francis right. County. We contract with our county. Right. right. Whatever agreement they have with them, as far as the percentages and where where they're at, uh, our our agreement is with them, and we're going to. I think that we should insist on on paying the actual uses that that we that we. Uh, the resources that we take from from that agency, and my understanding with the with the commission is is that it was completely understood, and and now we have the the system in place to be able to track that accurately. You know, it, it was a guessing game when when it was over here because of the record keeping that was that was done or not done here at this facility. Excuse me, but with the with the record keeping and the cat cat and the call logs that we have from St. Francis County. It's very easily tracked, and, and I think it's going to, again, it, I think that it would, either way it happens, if we use 25%, you know, I've, I've, I've put in a little bit of, of extra there just in case okay. our percentage does go up, but I think that that's an accurate, okay. um, an accurate usage. Well, you know, and again, that's, I know that was one of your justifications for getting it, and I know that was one of the reasons the board voted for it was to do just what it did. Right. So. Um, you know the twenty-four hundred dollars in the fee for the cards yeah. um, is very well justified. Oh, and I, and I didn't mention that. Yeah, this uh, up until now, our air cards have been funded by grants. Uh, the last time I applied for a grant, they they funded it, but kind of gave me the caveat that this is really something that probably ought to be a budgeted item. So I have I have increased line items to include. Uh, at, at one point, if you remember a couple years ago, uh, Charger started charging us for our internet, which was free before. That always came out of my telephone line item. Uh, I just split that into a separate internet line item just for tracking purposes. And I also added a uh, request for the air cards for the which is 2400. But again, with the cost savings, I think that we're getting from dispatch, I think it's more than paid for itself. Yeah, true. Anything else for? All right. Thanks, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Page three. Page twenty. Mm -hmm. You're up, Nate. <laughs>
Okay, how many, how many people in the department? In the salary number? With uh, means four. And the two part, or the two summer helps included it in was the salary summer, number yeah. two. So, with no transfer from the general fund, and with no capital improvements budgeted in his figures, off of the, 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 the revenue sources are 698730 Day projected total expenditures of 617,445. So the general operating budget that he has submitted is, is balanced. It includes. Your top number. No, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 648. Well, it's still balanced. It does. That's, yeah. Um, I'm going to start again, please. I'm, I'm not finding this. All right, 648, 730. Where's that at? On the first page. Page 20. 20. Total revenue. Total revenue. Total revenues. Mine says. 648. Before, like, 648. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Revenues. Thank you. Then two pages later on page 22. You'll see that he has projected total expenditures of 617,445. In that, he has some equipment purchases a dump truck, two spreaders, and a used pickup. That's that $80,000 figure. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, any any expenditures outside of this budget will come from either not making equipment purchases or transferring from the general fund. And that's not using the special real fund, right? That is not using the special real fund. No, it's, I'm sorry, that is in there. Yeah, it's right. it's in there. I thought maybe you took it back out and you see drop it down. See, that was supposed to be earmarked or something, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's on now. Yeah. Well, it's got to be in the budget. No matter what, it's got to be. We don't have to use it, so right. But it's got even close. taking it out, he still, still has revenues in excess of project, projected expenditures. Why does the street department have a CD? CD reserve, what's that mean? Well, page 20, it's bottom, mid, mid level there. It's, the, it's money that comes in from the county road tax that wasn't spent at some point and was. The, the, the cash was used to purchase a CD. Now, what you, doesn't mean you can't spend it. I mean, you can't spend it. Well, we can cash in CDs. Spend it on a truck. Um, I guess, from a, a accounting principle standpoint, why would a department have their own CD? So, I'm sure it makes sense. I just don't understand it. Why does the why does the street department have a CD? And my, my answer was you can't mix the, the road tax funds with the general fund, so you couldn't put it together with money. We so it can't had go, it's right. got to stay Here. segregated from any of these So it was funds. determined at some point that we would save that money instead of spend that money. Okay, that, 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 that's, I just was, I didn't, I, my disconnect was you couldn't transfer. So thank you. And I mean, you can't spend it. Pardon? It's, it doesn't, doesn't mean it's doesn't not mean available for you to use. Right, gotcha. There's fifty-six thousand dollars for the street work right there. If you want, if we, you know, determine mm -hmm. to spend it, problem solved. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are we going to do? With now look at your list here. You got your list. Yeah. <laughs> Making new list of the work. 
Yeah, well, there's one or two on there you can work on. How much do you get on more fuel fat? <clears throat> Projecting 120,000. No, I mean, as far as, is that a per gallon price on that tax, or how does that work? State figures it out. We get that from the state, and I don't even know that. Yeah. I think the motor fuel tax is part of the per gallon tax. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I was thinking, I was just curious what if it was, you know, half a cent or a quarter cent. Or no, I don't know what it is. Penny, you know. It's, it's whatever it is on the farm they send us. Well, I mean, yeah, it was that, but I'll, it's that special tax that was voted in, and we get our share of it when it goes to the state and comes back. Um, it's a countywide tax, right? It's not a city tax. That's why I was right. another question to have. Yeah. But it also keeps you from adopting another transportation tax. We can't. The city can't have. It, we couldn't come up with another. To the, we couldn't even ask the voters to approve another city-specific fuel tax or transportation tax without raising the whole thing. Mm -hmm. No question. David, to carry on with Teddy's question to Chief Bennett, if, if you were asked to reduce your budget by 7.5%, what would be your thoughts? If you all remember, uh, I guess three years ago, uh, my, we cut our budget by quite a bit, and there was nothing in here that I could cut. I mean, everything, if you look through here, is bare bone. There's only a couple things that's been increased. It's only because we had to, like the, for special services, the 5000 extra dollars, that's for the brush site to be hauled away every year. I mean, yeah, we could uh, let it build up for a year, but then it's going to cost us 10000 the next year. Uh, I can't, other than you not letting me have this equipment on my wish list, I can't proceed cutting anything. I mean, we just, Martin was just talking to me yesterday about Porter Street, and that ditch through there, that wasn't in my budget, so I have to buy uh, chemicals, you know, to kill, kill them, uh, them weeds through that ditch line that, you know, we didn't have before. So, I mean, that was, that's above and beyond, so it's out. I really can't see, I mean, I've been working with just the bare minimum for all these years, and, you know, yeah. uh, I'd say I don't, get what I want, I get what I need. I mean, oh yeah, I'd love to have a brand new dump truck there and all this, but you know, I know we don't have $174,000, so I'll settle for a $40,000 truck. I'll be happy with it. But one of the scenario was that the city lost $700,000 in that one year. There was no choice. If it would come down to that, yes, I'd go through every line item and cut what I could. Okay, you know? so you would look at it Again, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, if you told me I had to, I'd take it back tomorrow and come back, okay, I, you know, but, yeah, but, but within the uh, services are going to. Again, without capital expenditures, he would be talking about $43,000, which he would, I assume would go, well, I just won't buy the equipment I think I need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you would, you need them spreaders. I got to have spreaders. No, they're shot. They're, their life expectancy is seven years. I got 18 years out of them. I mean, when we go to pressure work, yeah. yeah. When you, when you trade them in, how much are you getting them? <laughs> I'm sorry. So, uh, how much are the spreaders? Uh, they're 15,000 a piece. So, that 80, 30,000 is for spreaders? Yes. 70,000, 40,000 is for the, the dump, dump truck. truck yeah. And 10,000 was so for you used pickup. Pick I mean, I'll settle for $2,000 pickup. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I just threw a number in there. I want to, I want to ask you a question. It runs. It may sound silly, and maybe it is. You know, I work around a lot of industry all over the place, mm -hmm. in big facilities, uh, just in, a, in a mine today in Illinois, and uh, they they have to run people around to different areas with small tools, mm -hmm. right? Like a like a big welder, a big air compressor, and they're running these little bitty, not for the highway little trucks. You've seen them around, they've sit around here every now and then. And, uh, you know, they, they got a little bitty engine in them, and they would get good, is, would it be just ridiculous for us to say, is that a viable option for something we could use here in St. Genevieve? I mean, if you're sending one guy, and you're sending two kids out with the weed eaters, 
Um, Some of those things look like golf carts with a bid on them. They're a little more substantial than that. I mean, at, at, the, mine, at the mine today, they got they got big welders that you'd have on a mechanic's truck. I mean, you know, a couple, couple thousand pounds, and they got little lift beds. Is that just a ridiculous idea, or is, is that something that would be worth worth looking at? I mean, instead of getting one truck, you get three of those. Well, four. Yeah, that would work, but like I say, a lot of times, like, and with the crazy weather it's been, you know, we get called out, I mean, for tree limbs and stuff, which, you know, every time we have a storm, we, we pick up a bunch of tree limbs, how much can you put in one of them? Well, I know, you're talking about replacing every vehicle you have. I don't have many, Tom. But if you're looking to get 10000 bucks for a used vehicle, I don't know what these things cost, but if you could buy two of these, I'm asking you to be creative in your thought process, and you tell me that it's just silly, I can live with that. Well, no. But, you know, I, I, I see your point, but most of the time when we send people out, we send two people out. Because like I said, I, I'm not going to send one person out and clean a ditch with a weed eater, you know, because safety issue. Well, you know. I won't even talk about how many people are tucked cut in the dirt behind that concrete on Surface Street that was that wide and that deep. Yeah. That was quite an operation. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, it, I think that to stretch our budget, we're really going to have to try to be creative. And, and being creative isn't necessarily, it's being cheap in, in being creative. You know, I, I don't know. I think we should ask questions like that and look at it and, and spend an hour looking at them on the internet and say, that would never work here. Or say, huh, huh. I'm not saying I won't try it. Well, we, we could try it. Well, I just, I'm just asking if we yeah. maybe look at it and see if it's even a possibility. I mean, can two people fit in these vehicles? Because some of them with us are only a one-man vehicle. No, it wasn't that. Well, I think they come in all shapes and sizes and all costs. Uh, I guess the next I question part is, I don't think the street legal. Well, and is that something that yeah. we could do by ordinance to make them legal to drive on the streets? Mm -hmm. and not, a, not a discussion for this forum, yeah. but I think those are the kind of things. When somebody says to you, what can you do to cut your budget by 7.5%? And you say, nothing. That's no good. You know what I mean? I, I mean, realize, I can, but I'm, well, you know. that's what we're asking. Yeah. I realize that this is a real number, right? And, and you got nothing extra. No. Anybody, anybody driving around can see you got nothing extra. Exactly. I mean, but if you're, I've been on both sides of this fence. Mm -hmm. When some my boss comes in and says, I want you to increase sales by 10% and decrease your budget by 15%. It's not, he's not giving, asking for my opinion. He's telling me this is what you're going to do. Well, and it's crisis mode. So, you have to get real creative. If that's what you tell me to do, I'll do it. You know, Come on, Tom, I'm, you got him crying. Well, no, <laughs> and I'm not saying that we no, ever ask happen. you to do that, no, Dave, but we have to, to, to squeeze a little more blood out of this turner. We're going to have to get very creative. And we can't just build walls and say we can't. And we, we may end up with, well, very unpleasant things. And maybe that's what the difference is between fixing streets and cutting budgets. I mean, it's how unpleasant it would be. If you look at my mosquito budget, I cut it down, you know, quite a bit. You know, because I... I'm not beating you up at all. I understand that. I'm just saying, uh, what, what, what is what it? Is? Case. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it comes down to that and you tell me that, I, you know, I will, you know. But like say, you know, the stone gravel and say, you know, we cut the budget down a little bit on that because, like I said, we don't furnish Alliance with our, our rock no more. They buy their own. You would just have uh, less to work with than you deal with. Exactly. You know, I mean, we can. Okay. No, that's a reasonable. I've been doing this since I've been here. That you know, I've been working whatever you guys tell me to do. You know, that's a reasonable I mean, answer. I, you give me a hundred dollars, I'll do what I can with a hundred dollars. But, but the, the the reason for these meetings. Mm -hmm. is for them to ask you and for you to express your priorities exactly. so that if it when it comes time to decide what needs to go they have some sense of what's most important to you and and and, and I think that's kind of Tom's frustration is you, you basically said it's all important to me well it is I mean like sign repair I mean I've asked for the last three years for money for sign repair that we're supposed to do and you guys keep kicking it out you know Basically, that sign repair is because we're supposed to comply with, and we've been doing that as we go. Yeah, but the but, decision know. they have to make is, in order to give Dave a dump truck or a sign repair, yeah. is I have to not employ a police officer. 
So I send somebody well, home. Then I'll make my dump trucks last. You, you know, know, that's 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 so the balance. Apart. I mean, I'll, I'll do what I have to do. That's what I'm really the, what I'm driving for is we need to understand the consequences of our actions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's real easy. Okay, everything 10%, let's go home. All right? But what are the consequences of that? Everybody wants more streets. We all do. Mm -hmm. Hands down. But if the consequences are too high, exactly. maybe we have to just live with the streets we've got for a year. Or, or have very few capital projects where we spend a lot of money. Well, you, you need maintenance. I mean, there's, right. you, you can't not have not not take maintenance. Yeah. I'm just talking about capital but projects. A new street, a new tear out yeah. replacement. You know, it's kind of that's kind of where I'm going. I'm not right now. I, I can't tell you that I'm in favor of seven and a half percent cuts or ten percent cuts. I can't tell you that I'm not in favor of just leaving this alone and coasting a year on streets. I, we're not going to have. We're going to make a bad. We're going to make yeah. the best bad decision exactly. available yeah. to us. So understanding the consequences of. You know, I want everybody, including me at this table, to realize if we say, Dave, you got to cut 10%, what's that going to do to you? That's going to be It's going to hurt, but brutal. It's yeah. going to be brutal, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's what we got to weigh out in the end. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's the same thing with what we were just talking with Chief Bennett. Mm -hmm. Man, I mean, you go pulling the rug out from under public safety. Wow. You know, but at the same time, can we, can we screw it down just enough mm -hmm. to create some funds to spend some money over here? I can. That's what you want. I can go back and cut some of this, but you know, but not asking you to do that now. Oh, Just what your yeah. general what feelings are. are. If you really had to cut seven half percent, I think what you said was, you know what, we're going to deal with it. It was we buy a little less rock, we do a little less of this, and I mean, and, and we figure it out. You know. <laughs> so, are there any big? Is there anything big and significant that you would say? If I had to do that, right here it is. Right there, it is. Or is it really just going to be pieces off everything? If it would be up to me, I'd cut mosquito fog now. It's, to me, it's a waste of time, a waste of money, because we're, we're, we can't afford to do it properly. Where is that? It's 20,000. No, no, it's 20,000. Do we have any way to gauge its effectiveness? I hard sell. There's no metrics to support. Dropping in the streets when you're spraying? No, we no. don't have to bring the streets we've brought after we bought. Right. <laughs> you kill whatever mosquitoes come into contact with the liquid in time to spray. <laughs> right. You don't you don't change the life cycle, you don't do keep new ones from being just wipe out the ones you can most of you which can go. Do but uh in order to do it properly, you have to either like you know, in a town of our size, it's supposed to be twice a week. Yeah. We don't have that budget. Yeah. Well, plus you need vector control. I mean, we need we need mosquito police. We need to find the places where there's stagnant pools of water. We need to get citizens to fix their own problems and fix our so problems. Really that's exist. It's all their mess. We've we got water standing behind the old blackness shop and the old Gabbery yeah. Creek bed. It's just breeding mosquitoes left and right. Mm -hmm. But you know, you, you, you there there are there are hundreds of those. Actually, I went to a, a school for mosquitoes, and uh, it was an eight-hour course, and you're supposed to have somebody there that, that goes out, like Martin just said, you, you set out your traps, you pick them up, you bring them in, you count them, you count them and you sex them. You figure out what sex they are. And then you take them to, you either take them to Cape or you put uh, in dry ice and you ship them down there every day, and this is an everyday thing. I mean, it's not a one-person deal. So in order for us to do this, we'd have to employ at least two people to do, the sex and yeah. to do no, this. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it's not a just oh, we'll spray. No, you, you set the traps out. You have, oh my God, that stinky stuff that you've got to put in there to draw them. Mm -hmm. We made some up. We tried it. Yeah, we don't want to do that. So, so what we do? Well, we buy chemicals and we spray and we kill well, the ones we can come get, in contact with. Get what we can. But. Is it doing any good? I know. I think they've been pretty bad this year, and he's been spraying. So I'm not too sure we're doing much. We're not out there on the street sweeping up dead mosquitoes when he's done. So I'm just not too sure how. Uh, you're, you're not going to find any money. infections on this board. It only kills. And that's what we were looking for. Yeah, something that, like that. That's one. That that's exactly like right. right there. That's, that's exactly right. right. And maybe, maybe you'll completely take all of it. Take part of it. That, that's what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah. I, I really think that would be a, a cost saving. I know that we'll all take a hit you from it. you got overtime there involved with exactly. that. Four hours overtime use. every week. 
Yeah, it, it's not just for 23 the 20, weeks. It's not just the 20,000 that you're busting for the chemical. Exactly. You've got to look at the manpower too yeah. and the wear and tear on your vehicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a creative process. That's a good idea. Would you still do the biscuit? Yeah, we'll, we, you know, yeah. that's that's one of the big things. But like this, you know, this year has been exceptional because we had a lot of rain. Yeah. You don't really want to throw them in the storm drains, and all of a sudden it rains and it washes them away, so you yeah. lose the money there. Yeah. And whenever we, we, that's why we bought the four wheeler so we could put them in the fields over there, in the big field. But or not big field, but anyway, over by the by the old dump. But whenever the farmer puts his stuff in, it's hard for us to get in there to do that. Mm -hmm. Actually, I even went and bought a, a two dollar slingshot. Really? So we could uh, put them out for over there. <laughs> yeah. That's so pretty creative. That's, that's, that's very creative. That's, 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 that's what I'm looking for, right? I there. found the $2 somewhere. That, 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 if I saw that, 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 and I call up the engineer today, and he expects him to be out there Friday to start uh, putting in the storm sewer pipe. Expects? Didn't say Friday. Is that going to be paid for this? Yeah. Budget? Expects what Friday? Yeah. Should be. Okay. Uh, They've got a 60 day contract for 30 days worth of work, probably. That's probably why they haven't been in a hurry to get started. Because they know they can finish it on time. What's that? Not my department. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my budget. <laughs> so, so Dave, on your building repair maintenance here, mm -hmm. um, would that, it, I don't know what all is involved there, but would that be something that well, if you had okay. to? The building repair maintenance, what I did, I, I requested a new heating and air conditioning unit because the one we have is antiquated. I mean, and I, I feel that, you know, it would save a lot of money on energy if we bought a new system. I mean, because it's been there probably since the building's been there. And half the time it, you know, it blows out hot air when it's supposed to blow out cold air, and the cold air when it's supposed to blow out hot. You know, that's a request. I mean, yeah, that's something know. that. But I really think in the long run it would save us money. Mm -hmm. The uh, work session where we first discussed this, John asked if we have investigated the uh, oil fired heaters. No, because I've. That's, you know, that's not my strong point. I don't know anything about heating cool. I just got bids from, you know. Yeah, a lot. They make those furnaces that use waste oil. I got one in my shop. Well, this is inside our Man, where we eat and stuff. Does a great job. Well, no, it's no. not the shop. I don't think it pollutes. Everybody's going to in that in the automotive. Yeah, well, just, your house? No, it just no. Our, the, 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 in my shop in Fredericktown, we just had like to pay to have our used oil hauled off, and now. Uh, between the oil that we change ourselves and our equipment and the oil that our customers barrel up for us so they don't have to pay someone to come get it. We, we, we keep our shop 75 degrees yeah, in So what's the interior environment? Is it, is it so, so the metal building that No, but I mean in terms of the air, is it clean air mm -hmm. coming into the building? Clean air? Yeah, you don't have like fumes. soot or... Oh, no, fumes nothing. Or you don't even... I mean, and it, it's... Uh, Ours is a little loud because we have a metal building with, with partial no partial to no insulation, uh, so we get the reverberation off of it. But that's really it. Uh, we had a big upfront cost on it, but uh, that was our only cost. It was the upfront cost. Uh, Dave, if we're on your list here, and I'm sure it's there. I'm missing it. training. You got a line item for training? Um, that'd be safety, probably. So that's all your safety supplies, training, everything. You know, I'm a big believer in, in, in uh, knowledge is value, and the more knowledge of our people are, the more valuable they are in safety training. And, um, we, we, yeah, we are uh, now part of the Missouri Risk Pool for our workman's comp, and they are very proactive on some training, and so we'll have available training. to us online uh, safety training that we could do in the, in the shop. You just log Excellent. on, you get the training. They've got, like I said, they have 600 modules and Excellent. all sorts of stuff. So I think we're going to have a resource through our pool that we haven't had for training. Actually, we go through MOLAP right now, and we've actually uh, we went through a 10-hour OSHA course, and uh, we also went through uh, chainsaw safety just recently, and we're uh, we've got our uh, oil spill certification, <coughs> chemical spill 
uh, certification and uh, flag uh, flag safety. And there's one more, which we go through MOLAP, and it's uh, like $25, $35, something like that for us to remember what it costs us. It's $35. $35. Yeah. And like I say, every time they have one in Cape, you know, a lot of times they'll send them, they got a roll, whatever, we don't go that, we, we go to Cape. So we've been at least four of them this year. So, so do you have an annual plan for a number of uh, training seminars, training hours per employee? Well, we don't really have any, uh, actual training hours that we, we plan on. We go through a, a toolbox safety thing. We talk about stuff, and then I kind of do it as we go along. You know, they leave a rake down, you know, uh, as we go. And uh, but like I say, when MOLAP has it, they send me the information, and usually Martin agrees with it. So. I don't think I've ever turned you down. No, you haven't. No. You've been good about that. Um, but the difference yeah. with these other ones is maybe we can get, yeah, we can lower cost and, and get yeah. more, more information in there. More proactive instead of just taking what comes, yeah. plan for it, and make sure you schedule time for the guys and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Dave, on your office equipment, what are you needing? Uh, I need equipment? a computer. My computer, yeah. and that, yeah. as you see on this, uh, uh, that Morrow Street, that was a type typo because I type it and all of a sudden I'm sitting there waiting for it to come up. Okay. So it, it, it's okay. 10 years old, so it's kind of. You know, when I type on it, <laughs> I gotta sit and wait for it to come up. I'm like, okay. I mean, I'm not a good typist anyway, but you know, I'm like, this is ridiculous. And then you said you have like 10% on the insurance, right? Do I have an open? Or that yeah. is 10% yes. on it. They can have. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have any computers here. All right. I'm keeping the line. I need what about them street lights? We got a seventy-five thousand here. Does that include? Forget I said that. No, no, the electric's different. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Just that's well. No, that's also out of Progress Parkway. Whatever citizens take care of, and all the street lights around town. Oh, okay. So that's not. That's not down. Some of them down down here with the Great River. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got some high maintenance streetlights. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, they are. Yeah. You know, and Tom, uh, for safety, which is, I apologize for this, because I just got this yesterday. Uh, I tried to get for our uniforms. I want to go with a high intensity yellow, which we're supposed to, the ANSI 2. And anyway, the guy just gave you the price, which we found out today was going to be like $200 a year more. Yeah. I didn't add that. I'd like for. See if you guys would let me add that to uh, you know, the wrong record. <laughs> well, I mean, it's $200. You know. yeah. well, I'll find it somewhere, but I mean, I'll, yeah. But for safety, because I think it'd be. So we got uh, that orange stripe set where it's just, you know, that's not, it's, it's not legal anymore. What do you mean legal? It's not supposed, it's supposed to be ANSI 2, and it's, it's not uh, reflective. What? What's the requirement? I mean, is there some state requirement that city it's, employees have to wear something? No, actually, city employees are exempt from uh, from OSHA, but we try to go by OSHA as much well, as we possibly can. I'll tell you what will happen. Mm -hmm. If you're not following OSHA regulations, exactly. somebody gets seriously injured or killed, that's right. That's mm -hmm. why give them the keys to the city. That's why we try to go by OSHA them. rules as much as we possibly can. <laughs> All right. So, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. I think the average citizen wants to feel safe in their community. They want police and fire service. I think the average citizen expects to get water when they open the tap and expects their water to go away when they flush the commode or open the drain. I think the average citizen expects to have roads to ride on. And, and, and I think everything else is kind of, no matter how important we could justify it, I think those are the basic needs that most citizens will judge us by. Um, Yeah, I don't. I don't think they care about city stuff. I don't think they care about. I don't think they, they don't care if there's a city administrator. They don't care if there's a tourism industry. The, the, the average citizen. Yeah, you know, all of a sudden we take back. everything away. <laughs> Give me my police department, my fire department. I want roads and I want water and sewer. Yeah. And sidewalks. Yeah, I'm not even sure about that. I'm not sure. Most people walk there, in the street. There are, there are whole communities yeah. in my community. that have no sidewalks. Yeah, they never do. It's by design, they don't have any sidewalks. Yeah. Where's that at? I think that, um, you know, 
but it's not like we're talking about what to do with extra money. Uh, it's going to come down to how we want to uh, prioritize things. If we feel like there's such a priority that we must uh, use 10 percent of the budget for capital street improvements, then everybody gets a 10 percent cut. So we're going to lose things. To pay for something right now, we're going to lose something somewhere. We hadn't. We don't have money to shift around that's that in a bucket. Anything that we determine that we decide that that we have to spend on streets and roads comes from somewhere else. So how much of that can our city stand it is really what it comes down to. Um, I don't see that we have waste uh, in any of our apartments where we're just throwing money away. So it's, it's good. There's going to be pain involved. If, if we go forward and try to save some street money, and maybe that's the decision we make. And maybe that's really what we should be talking about to people in our wards all the time. Hey, this is kind of what we're thinking. You know, if, if we did some street repairs, you got to realize it's going to cost you over here. We're going to we're going to hurt the street department. We're going to hurt the fire department, the parks department, everybody. And uh, you know, it's, it's not. We don't have a good decision to make it. Yeah, but when, when you're making you're up a budget, and you're, you're giving a budget to all the departments, why isn't there a place for capital improvements within that budget? Well, right now, Teddy, we don't have it. So, right. so to create it, we have to take it away in the budget. Right, that's, I know that. So again, what we always do, we pay for sins of past you know that that I mean, was it was it never like that or that it was never a fund for capital improvement in the budget when you when you did the budget I, that, last year we did that yeah well i thought we we did we carried some money over and we you, you did but I mean, and, we, and we we had to designate we came in and said <clears throat> here's the public works budget and it includes these roads and there was a lot of discussion at this table about what roads should or should not be done, and we ended up with Porter Street. Right, but we've never taken our Westwood. revenue and taken a percent of our revenue and say this now, will always go toward road improvement. You, you have not done that. Right. And that would be essentially what we'd be doing right, to if start we it. said we wanted to cross the board cut from every department to fund this line item. Well, you know, what you got to remember, too, is that, I mean, yeah, I can cut some more, but like these sidewalks downtown, you know, we had that came up that wasn't in the budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, I'm sorry you weren't there, but, you know, and, you guys kicked it out. And they're still not in the budget but this year, and they're not on this list. Yeah, and it came out of my and, budget this and year. And those, the day, so, those mean, things know, come so, up every year, right? Yeah, so, Something. I mean, so yeah, oh yeah, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> that it comes, yeah. basically comes out of my budget. So like I right. said, you could take it away, but where are we going to find it when we need it? <laughs> that's when you start planting. Yeah, I know. Tax. Money trees. That, money that's trees. it. Instead of ginkgo's money, money trees. Well, that's there it is. I mean, up on Market Street where I took the upgrades to find it. Well, yeah, back to, to kind of what I said. Citizens will not and they're right. I, I listen to you. You tell me to fix it, I'll tell fix it. Until experience <laughs> the service Gotta reduction. Exactly. Uh, nobody, none of, nobody's going to do it until they're, until they're suffering a little bit or not getting what they think they should get. I apologize. I need to go. They, I, they, I how did, how how did the uh, chip and seal work out for our city of Pete last year? Uh, it was fairly Stopped economical to do. Oh, yeah. Chip and seal. If we can keep the county working with us. Yeah. Well, well, it's it's you have no you're drinking chip water and seal your risk. is to preserve they the streets, it's already basically still good. <laughs> a lot of the streets, especially out of Glen Drive, we did that, a lot of them roads were too bad. And that's why we're still, when we're out there with Sweeper, we're picking up rocks. It wasn't bad. You, know, mm -hmm. when you couldn't you, do that on a street like that. Like I said, it's another class we went to was chip and seal. I forgot about that one. That street is gone. But whenever you chip and seal it, what first thing you do, you take the oil truck and go through, then you have your truck right behind, your, your rock truck right behind it. If you if you let it turn brown, then it, it don't you know no, don't adhere to it. So then you roll with a rubber tire roller, which we don't have. So basically, what we did, we just kind of covered it up. Usually, when a road's that bad and, and that cracked up, it's because base failure to start with. I mean, we can. I mean, all you're basically doing is just 
So in your, your in your opinion, chip and seal was not a good thing for us. Well, I, I think, think it was. No, I think it was. Like it's going to make it last a little bit longer, but it's it's not a. It's not a <laughs> but but we did we didn't pick up roads where we knew there was a significant base failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we only we did the roads where there, there was some, but you know, but like out at uh, international subdivision, that that road is just it's just bad. I mean, uh, there's no. There's no something there, you know. Just like what he put on, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Seems like oh, it. I expect ten pages more. Yeah. So that wouldn't be a good option for us. Tom was talking about uh, not maybe not doing a project this year, but we might be able to raise the money to chip and seal a few more streets. A purpose. Is, purpose. is there? Uh, well, I've got a list, and uh, Carlos got it on our computer that you know of all the streets and all the you know the category how we we did them and. And that's where I got, you know, a lot of these from, but which is, you know. But these are remove and replace. Yeah. How about yeah. the chip yeah. and seal ones? You got a chip and seal? Yep. This out of yep. yep. It's all on there. And, uh, you know, I, I brought up about Progress Parkway. I mean, everybody think, well, it's new, but you stop and think, look at the cracks out there. I mean, if that's the perfect road to be chip and sealing now because it will preserve it a lot longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've sealed in cracks out there three times. And how old is that road? But the average citizen yeah. driving down that road won't see that. Exactly. 12 yeah. years, 13 years. Yeah, about 11, 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, look at this nice road. You know, like, why can't my road look like this? You look at Rosier Street out there that's just been done in 2010. There's cracks all over. Same yeah. way Main Street. There's cracks. Mm -hmm. That's the ones you want to you know, preserve. Like LeFleur. That's why I haven't patched anything on LeFleur because I was kind of waiting for you guys to make decisions what you want to do because. I mean, I'll I'll patch it, but it's just it's gonna be a waste of money. It's just that road is shot. If uh, and it got it worse, you know, since last year. You uh, mm -hmm. okay? Can and I just like Point Base Drive. Look, last look. year I figured it was like ten thousand dollars for us to pour concrete to, to patch the bad spots. This year it went another five thousand because it's it's spread out worse. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, the longer we go, the worse it's gonna be. And I know we don't have any money, but you know. Mm -hmm. Can you take a road and put a road base down and chip and seal it and not asphalt it? You can, yeah, yeah. But it's, there it's are like communities that, that uh, their roads are just <coughs> chip and seal, and that's what they did. It's called like a, uh, basically like a gravel they, road, they it's put, called a plug mill mix. Right, they put a good base down and, yeah. and just chip and seal it for a Just out of curiosity, would the county help, help us out again? I, mean, I, don't I think they would. And uh, the whole thing is, is that it was so. I thought it was economical mm -hmm. working with the county. Yep. Didn't they save us a bunch of money? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, like I said, I just don't want you to get high hopes that it's going to last another 10 years, whatever yeah. it's not. No. Well, I understand that, but wouldn't that be better than nothing? Oh, yeah, it'd be better. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if that's all the money we have, that's our only option. We have to do that. And, and well, we probably, I don't know, need to know how many streets are you would consider eligible for chip and seal. Uh, I've got the and then we got to talk to county into it. It's, it's on uh, if yeah, it goes out. Carlos' computer because my computer is not strong enough for that or whatever. I don't understand about it anyway. But anyway, she's got the printout. You need to order a new computer. Yeah, he's got that in here. He's got it in here under his office. I mean, I can get by with one I have. I mean, if that's well, you know, we can get you a, a pretty powerful. Computer just replacing this the computer for yeah for I've got a monitor five yeah, or six hundred dollars yeah. fifteen hundred would be the whole package yeah well I exactly. would have a hand me down one somewhere here we don't not the hand not really? hand down they, you know, I'll check the, I'm going to check over the welcome center they may have no one I think I asked that question yeah. Yeah. that's the one I was thinking about so we're going down right now. Thank you. Yeah, see. According to the sometimes the minutes, yeah. yeah. That they'll probably be down to level for total. So I say we need a list of the chicken steel streets. Yeah, let's get that list. It looks like we're going to be looking at that. Well, even if we did that in this year's budget, there'd be just less carryover. Well, we're not going to get it done this year. You we're going to use, are you, what were you talking about trying to get it done? No, we're talking yeah. about this. No, we're before. Before. Get talking the about county. Next year, yeah. 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 Okay. They, okay. The county usually does it at the end of their, their season. Right. Yeah. Yeah. we got to fit it in between the counties. The county's process. Yeah. 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 If you wait until the next year's budget, they'll be done because I think it was, what, yeah. end of August last year, the first yeah. part of September when we did it, and they wanted to quit earlier. 
They just uh, they waited another week to bring their stuff up. Yeah. County yeah. commissioners are very cooperative. Yeah. Their yeah. staff is not as mm -hmm. quite as enthusiastic about it. But, uh, and all the boys, they, they like working with us. Yeah. <laughs> Not that they don't like working with you. <laughs> Make a motion to send they the county like commissioners and pass a donuts yeah. for meeting. Yeah. Well, I will, uh, I will approach the county to make sure we, they're willing to provide the same level of support they did in the past. They will give us the list of uh, potential chip and seal streets, and then uh, we can kind of, kind of look at this. Yeah, I went through last year and put down like 2012, 2013, 14, 15, when we, when we wanted to do our streets. You know, what we should do each year, you know, but that depends on the money. I can make you list if you got a list last year. You can go into the guy and ask him. We'll see what we can do. Back to the bridge. Where's the bridge? Yeah. Well, you're taking a second out of four to five. We're trying to take 260 while they're on the back there's towards the bridge. So what you're saying? You only think you can make up 660. Yeah, we're trying to make up 660. Why are we looking at that? That was our opinion. They denied it. I thought I was supposed to know something about that. They actually, they were in here once and we got in. Got it. Okay. Oh, no. Actually, I got a hold of the Oh, has that company come down by the oil? Yeah. Anyway, well, that, yeah, I called them up and they said, they laughed and you don't have enough. Well, we might have maybe 100 gallons. Oh, no, they weren't buying it again. Yeah, but it's going the other way. That's ignorance. You know what it is, really. Because that oil is so well, we have the infrared. Oh, we done? Yeah. 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 You know, at the end of last year, we thought we, we projected carrying over $200,000. And while we weren't happy with that, we thought it was an adequate reserve, but someday we'd like to build it up some more. But we were satisfied with that level of cash. Yeah, and, and it's double that. And at the end of the year, we have twice what we thought we were going to have. So when we say we have to make up that dollars if you just harken back to last year's budget when a $200,000 emergency fund was considered adequate or acceptable, you know, if you did that again, that's the $200,000 of the two hundred and sixty were short. So it looks, you know, when you throw out the numbers, you go, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? But, but maybe it isn't quite as difficult as we thought it was going to be, assuming you're willing to accept that $200,000 cash carryover figure. It would mean you'd have to, you'd have to cut about sixty, and try to find and find money for streets on top of that. So, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm begging you guys, let me do some work out on Progress Parkway. That, I mean, not Progress Parkway, but the Point Base. That is terrible. I mean, that, that's, that's the, people shouldn't have to drive on that kind of road. And we got doctors always out there, and it just that's ridiculous, you know. And that's like, that's, that's that's that fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, with, with us doing the work because we've got the with us doing the work. Yeah, so. but, I mean we got to try. We got projects decide. like that. I think are reasonable, and I, I don't think we're going to get a. Obviously, we're not going to get a two or three hundred thousand dollars street out of next year's budget. I, it's going to be things like well, what you're talking it's about. It's going to be smaller projects. You know, and, and trust me, I mean it's not going to. It's going to fix that part, but then like I said, we just kind of continuously keep going. You know. Mm -hmm. 
you know, just add to it because it's going to keep breaking down. From last year it was ten thousand, now it's fifteen thousand this year because, like I said, more more spots got you know got worse. So, yeah. so my, when you said that last time, my question is: it fifteen thousand dollars this year because we didn't do anything last year? Exactly. Or would it be if we had spent the ten thousand last year? Would it, we? It would probably be the same way. Would be five thousand yeah, this yeah, year. It'd still be the same way, but Oops, but like I say, just, that, that whole road just falls apart. It, it's brittle and it just, it just concrete just wasn't. They poured it on top of mud. Yeah. 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 But is there any grants out there anywhere? Not just for streets, unless it's some kind of economic development. There's Delta Regional, and you got to tie it to something other than just internal city streets. Got to be tied to a project or a job creation or something like that. I looked and looked and looked. Did we tie Market Street in and build this? If you're coming back? Well, we've got to get the ankle going. That's job creation. Yeah, what's, there's something called the but for test where you have to be able to say to the grant agency, but for this expenditure, these things would not happen. I think Bill Best would be a difficult one to say since they're closing in a month. All they've asked is to get some help with trash removal. What time? Next six o'clock. Six o'clock next Thursday. Thursday. Six o'clock Thursday. And then yeah. after the meeting, also. Yeah, plan like yeah, on hanging around. Next, next Thursday, Thursday is that a regular yeah, board meeting. Yeah, it's going to be second Thursday. Thursday. No it's a work session. Small as a fire. It's a regular board meeting. Just so I know ahead of time, I can eat extra on Wednesday. Don't quit. Do something. They're falling apart. Yeah, market. I'm, you know, the county keeps telling me you got to do something with Market Street. That's the that, hey, when's our money that's the entrance to your community. So, so when's our next payment coming? For special roads. It'll be with their their budget year. What what January? Close. January. Yeah. So we got to wait until next January before we. They're, they're only going to pay for improvements on Fourth Street. At least. Uh, and we said, as long as we can hold on to the money until we build up enough to have a meaningful yeah. project, yeah. Then, then that we would accept that limitation. I was thinking three and four streets that went along. They agreed on that. I argued in favor of any street that brought people into the downtown business. Uh, but we, we, they argued that it has to connect a special road district to road to a, another special road district road. It had to somehow connect to a special road district road. So that Fourth Street was the only one they could, their attorney would said they should, should help us with. It all connects. It depends on how you drive. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, well, that's the main way to get to the courthouse. That's what they so, look at. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have kicked courthouse. this thing around a lot with the special roads. You know, and I still don't have a good idea of how that is set up and what our rights are. And does anybody out there, is there anybody out there that we can hire or get to find out exactly what can we do as a city to get out of the special roads or get money from them? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, we've talked about it, but I don't think anybody's ever done any investigation or we've always to, re to rely on their attorney to tell us what they think it is. Not entirely true. We have an opinion from our attorney that disagrees with their attorney. Mm -hmm. so, we go, so where do we go from there to, to get these people? Somebody's got to file a suit against somebody and then the judge will have to decide. I'm sure, I know they don't want to give up any money because it's been free money to them for all these years to realize that we, we are part of this. The city is part of this special roads. And we deserve some of that money back for roads, too. Yeah. I, I, so I'm, I'm not going to disagree with that. I, I could tell you what they say in response to that, but I don't want to speak for yeah, them. But, but what do we do? We just, do they we say just, the benefit, do we just stand here Their, their statement is that the city residents benefit from what they do. And, and that they, we're already receiving the benefits of their maintaining the county roads that we also use. Which we say they use our roads too, and we get no benefit from them. Well, we're getting twenty-four what? Twenty-four thousand. Twenty-four thousand. Ten percent or something. Right now, though. Well, they no, they no. 
So yep. that, they're not committing no, beyond one year, but they, they know we deserve yeah, more, and they're not going to give. They basically said their budget, which will be. We said uh, we're going to make the same request well, next year, and they'll give us. Lucky we're going to request the same time. more than that, and they're going to give us what they're going to give us. The easiest way to get it fixed is get other people elected. March. Well, they they said he'll run for special roads. Is he able to? Yeah, sure. Why not? Just because he Being works for the city, city doesn't mean his his, his his rights have been taken away from him. That's only Toby. <laughs> <laughs> no, they won't allow that with felonies, will they? <laughs> <laughs> only got one. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I just think it just goes on forever and the well, city gets it. one. I don't know how you stir the people up either. I don't. It's it's a, it's a, the people in town don't really care. It's an it's an education thing because absolutely there, there's enough votes to get the people voted on to that if people in town would take it seriously it, and would and, do it and, and vote for it. But um, I don't know. I just don't have. It. So how much money does it take to run and? A successful citywide election. I could. I, I used to know how much it cost in Jefferson County, countywide, but I don't. I don't know for the city. Thanks about five thousand. Thanks about five thousand. You can get enough literature out. And oh, I don't know about that. I, I thought you, you meant what does it cost the city? No, 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 no. I'm yeah. saying with the campaign. Yeah. What is, oh, um, campaign. For a successful campaign, about how many dollars does a person need to spend? Does anybody have a sense of that? Well, I spent five hundred. That's not citywide. You're the only one. Well, well no. they, what's the limitations on it? And you're only allowed to spend so no, much. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, you got to spend No, you got to spend more money. Yeah, you got to raise more money. Player where it came from. Right. right. Yeah. Over five hundred. Mm -hmm. Supposed to. Sue, on these employee insurance, is that family plan? Is that just the worker? Yeah. You know, like police yeah. or yeah. Yeah. straight? We, in, we, yeah. we provide. I'm just asking about insurance. We, we, we provide health insurance to every employee at no cost. And we apply, well, pretty much to employee, employee spouse, employee child, and employee family. Those are the four categories uh, at, with just a minor contribution from the employees. Let, less than 1% for the ones that, that, that pay. And if you'd like, we can provide that figure to you to, at our next meeting. Yeah, with the cost going up so much, we may have to yeah. look at that percentage there, too. It's tough. It's just, I know it's just tough. It's 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 tough. Are we done with my budget then? I think we're yeah, done. Oh, Unless yeah. there's anything else, yeah. I think we're done. With me? done. Yeah. Ask the mayor. Hey. I think we're done. Oh, I mean, we're still on uh, TV, so. Thank you for watching Channel 7 and 98. Thank you for watching Channel 7 and 98. Hi, thank you very much for watching Channel 7 and 98.